Imagine spending a night in a hotel after a week and a half camping in the backcountry. There's hot, fresh food in town, and you're healing your body and treating yourself. And then one day turns to two because more rest is needed, and you can afford some self compassion. But you came here to hike, so back to the trail it is. I'm so glad to be here. This is absolutely beautiful. This is really one of the best days I think you could come back to. I brought myself a little treat from civilization. A wrap and a peach. No peanut butter on a tortilla for me today. Welcome to Mount Trudy. I don't know if there's a view or this is the view. Oh, there is this for a view. One time I was like, I don't know if there's going to be any views. Okay, so funny story. Um, when I started the trail, I saw that the maps came in six sections, right? So I thought, oh, okay, like you can resupply along the way. But like, that's a normal thing to think, right? Wouldn't you think so? Well, apparently not, because I bought one through three. I'm gonna buy more in Silver Bay, but they didn't have any. So I am at Tedagooch State Park. I had to walk a mile to the visitor center. And then when I got there to buy four, five, and six, they only had five and six. So I was like, Am I just not going to have a map for like 50 miles? I don't know what to do. But then a guy that was there, just another customer, just another visitor at the visitor center was like, Hey, I heard you say you need map four here. You can have my copy. And I was like, yes, hero of the day. And so now I'm set to go. I am kind of bummed out about having to walk a mile there, a mile back, but I didn't have to take my pack, so at least that's something. I'm not doing too hot right now. My tendon going up from my left heel is giving me a lot of trouble and I rested it for two days. But today it just feels back to the way it was. Like all that rest was for nothing. Finally made it. Even though that took me almost an hour and a half to walk 2.3 miles.
Good morning. Day 12, I believe, and I am hoping to go 15 miles today. And hopefully I can prepare to do a really big day, like 25 or 30 miles tomorrow. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so embarrassed. Okay, I gotta tell you this story. Last night, I met these two dudes at the campsite. So today, I was walking and I saw them and I was like, yo, what's up? They didn't really say much, they weren't as chatty, but I was kind of barreling through. Then, as I'm walking away, I'm listening to their conversation and like, from the context, I either walked through while the one guy was like mid p or just about to so as i'm walking away my face is turning beet red i'm like oh my goodness i did not realize why didn't you warn me but uh, that's my inspiration to walk fast today i don't think i can look that guy in the eyes ever again don't want to run into him so putting some distance between me and them Look at this lunch spot I found. It is slightly sprinkling. This bush I'm sitting under it really isn't doing anything because uh, the rain's coming from this way. At first I thought a little sprinkle would be good, but then the wind picked up. So I left my stuff with my rain cover on and came and hid next to this rock. It, it's not really protecting all of me, but I did the best I could. I can't even begin to tell you all how good it smells up here. It smells like pine needles and rain and fresh air. The rain is falling on my face and it feels so it cools me down, plus it's just like, I feel immersed in nature. I think this is my favorite view so far. It's so cool. So rugged, so wide open. It's almost knee deep mud. It won't come out. Yuck. This is my biggest, are you kidding me moment? Oh my gosh. Do you think that looks that deep? Cause I didn't. People told me to expect mud and mosquitoes on the SHT if I went in June. I took them seriously, but I didn't picture scraping knee deep mud off myself while I fight away mosquitoes.
even with me wringing my shoes out, they're still really squishy. But I don't know what else to do. It's my only pair of shoes. As I was standing up from getting some of the mud out of my shoes, I heard some thunder in the distance. Um, it was so far away, I just kept going. But just now, it's been like five minutes, there was a flash of lightning and eight seconds later, a roll of thunder. So if it's eight miles away and it's not actively storming, like, I really, I don't know what to do. Like, if there was some sort of cave or rock outcrop, sorry, branch, if there was a cave or rock outcrop around here, definitely I would take shelter, but like, where am I supposed to take shelter among all these trees? So I'm in between the last campsite and the campsite I had planned for tonight. I'm gonna keep going and just hope for the best. So it seems to me like the storm is in that dark cloud right there. And where I am, we're okay. We're just gonna hear the thunder and have some of the wind, but the storm isn't actually on top of me. And if you're wondering what I would do if it was on top of me, one, you lay down in a ditch, don't care about getting wet, and then if you're like in a wide open field, there's nothing to protect you, what you do is squat and put your, put your two hands like this. That's lightning position. I always have a plan, folks. It's still thundering and the rain keeps getting harder and lighter on and off. And I'm the lowest in elevation that I'm going to be for a little bit. And I was just like, okay, now's the time. Take shelter. I found this spot underneath the tree, a tree that's a little dry. So at least there's that. I'm about to set out again. Haven't heard thunder in a while. My hands look like this and my feet look about the same. Plus the wet socks, plus the wet shoes. Gonna get some blisters. It's hailing. It's been a really eventful couple of hours. So the sun's out now. You know, that's a good thing. But as I was just going to fill up my water down there, I slipped on a rock, hit my left knee really hard on the rock, and my right foot went in the water. So, <sighs> it's just the day of wet shoes. I made it. I'm here and first order of business, hang stuff to dry. Second order of business, bug spray. I'm going to attempt 30 miles just for fun. It's not about like trying to be the fastest, trying to be the best, but I was just like, I wonder how many miles I could walk if I really, really tried. So I'm gonna try tomorrow. Good morning. It's big mileage day. My shoes feel even wetter than before. But a good thing is it's going to be a cooler today, so hopefully that helps. Right now I'm just trying to get ready as fast as I can. It's like 6.10 right now. I'm about to put on my wet shoes. Yuck. It's cold, but it actually isn't that wet. It is... 8 o'clock and I'm on the trail, which really frustrates me because there are days when I've had a full hot breakfast and coffee and got on the trail in two hours. So, really disappointed, but it was cold, it was wet, so everything was dirty, and there was a swarm of mosquitoes outside my tent. So, 
I did the best I could. I'm sorry, buddy, but I gotta go around ya. And here we have four leaf clovers, number 10 and 11. Well, we got a girl down. I just slipped uh, going down this gravelly downhill. I could feel my feet slide out from under me. My butt hit the ground. It was pretty soft. I was like, oh, okay, fine. And then this guy decides to ram into my armpit with all the force in the world. Ouch. So I go, ah. And then I wanted to vlog it because I thought it was pretty funny. Honestly, while I am having some trouble getting up, I just don't want to. I don't feel like walking anymore. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta complain and then go ahead and do it. And the complaining makes it a little better, but you still get up and do it anyway. Oh my gosh, this is... Okay. Whew. So it's five o'clock and um, I think it's more than five miles to my goal and... I just really don't feel like it anymore, so I'm probably not going to use that personal best. It'll just be 20 miles for today, and you know that's the, that's what I've been doing in a normal day, so that kind of stinks because I've been trying really hard, especially today. But oh well, it's, it's something. I thought about hiking two more miles to the next campsite, but. I just can't do it. I don't have anything left in me. Um, oh, sorry, my feet really hurt. But the thing of it is, I wanted to find out how far I could hike in a day, and I did. I can hike 20 miles. Case closed. I cold soaked my ramen all day so I wouldn't have to bother with fixing dinner. Of course, it's only 6.30 so I could fix dinner just fine. I have plenty of time but I don't want to and I already have this. It definitely smells good but I feel like this part isn't as cooked or soaked up enough water as this part. We'll see. And the verdict is, it's not bad. Tastes like cold ramen. Oh my goodness. I forgot that I didn't really calculate the mileage exactly. I was just looking at the map and guessing because I didn't have the mileage from campsite to campsite. But then from Facebook, I found this document that has all the campsites listed out and the distances between them and I just added it up. I actually did 25.3 miles and I thought I just did 20. 20 or 15 is what I usually do so super proud of myself. Plus that explains why I've been so sore walking around this campsite. I'm walking around hunched over so slowly and I'm like this doesn't feel like I just like 20 miles today. I'm normally not this sore. I just calculated um, how much I had left and worked backwards to see how much longer the trail is going to take me and it's going to be about a week um, which is really nice to have an end in sight. Looking forward to it. They, the 15 mile days are still going to be pretty strenuous though because of lots of elevation coming up. Good night. Got a slug trail all over my sock. These are the things that only happen when you're hiking. 
I have one bad blister, but other than that, I'm not really feeling the effects of yesterday's big hike too much. I really feel pretty good. This time next week, I'll be finishing up the trail. You know, I am actually really looking forward to having clean clothes and if I want more to eat, I can go get more to eat. Which as soon as I had that thought, I also had the thought that there's people all over the world that don't have that. There's a lot of people without food or clean clothes. It makes you remember how much you have to be able to do stuff like this and it makes you want to help other people too because no one should go their whole life feeling like this. I think I might have found the perfect lunch spot. It's only 11.30 but it's in the shade, rocks to lean against, and I get this as a view. Ugh, this place is so epic. Well, I have a funny story for y'all. And yes, it does have to do with pee again. Okay, so before I sat down to eat my lunch, I had to go to the bathroom, but the woods were pretty thick. And so I just kind of stepped off trail and squatted behind a little mini Christmas tree. And I thought, no one's around anyway. I'm peeing. And the next thing I know, I look up and two people are on the trail right in front of me. And I'm like, shoot, I don't know what to do. Because if I say, oh, I don't look at me. You know, your first instinct is like, who's talking to me? What are you saying? So I just stayed there, squatted down, being quiet. Prayed they didn't turn around and look at me. And they never did. I don't know, maybe they saw me when they were coming and they were just, da -da -da, we don't see anything. But, oh my goodness, it was close call. I took one of my first spur trails to Britain Peak and it was a tough climb but the view is so worth it. It's so amazing to look out over to the south and be like, I've been there. I've climbed those hills. I've crossed those rivers. <sighs> what a view. Today had a lot of good views. It was cooler weather-wise and miracle of miracles, my tendon wasn't hurting as bad. So even though I did 15 miles as opposed to yesterday's 25, um, I was still tired at the end, my feet still hurt. Usually towards the end of the day, I'm just like, oh, do I have to keep going? I'm so bored of hiking, I wanna stop here. But I'm starting to do this thing where if I hike till four o'clock, I get to eat my little cliff bar. If I hike till five o'clock, I get to eat an applesauce and, I, and just, just rewarding myself.
like a dog but i am very excited for this campsite not only is it beautiful and pine tree but i got a picnic table the good thing about this trail is all the campsites have benches which is really handy but this one i can i don't have to cook next to me and to the side i can sit up straight and cook in front of me oh can't wait Here we go for fabulous day 15. Honestly, when I woke up, it didn't feel so fabulous. It was really hard to get going. But today I'm trying to see everything as it's a memory that I'm reliving. For example, I'm not gonna say, oh, day 15, there were a lot of hills. I'm gonna say, yeah, there was a lot of hills, but they didn't stop me. That is my philosophy for today. Four leaf clover number 12. I'm almost to my campsite for the night and the idea I had at the beginning of the day, honestly, I forgot about it till about four o'clock, but by starting out my morning being really positive and um, thankful, made the whole rest of the day better, changed my mindset. So it's been a really good day, um, hiked really hard. The thing is, remember when I did big mileage day and I started out with wet shoes? Well, that gave me a blister that was like this big and it felt like stepping on a little rock in your shoe. So I didn't really do anything about it. But now it's grown. I don't really know how, but now the whole entire bottom of my foot feels like I'm stepping on gravel barefoot every time I take a step. It really hurts. Once I get going, it kind of doesn't hurt as bad, but that was the downside of the day. I discovered the reason it felt like my blister grew is that I actually grew three new blisters. One on my longest toe, which is my second toe. I'm descended from royalty, I know. My, on the ball of my foot and on the corner of my heel. So no matter how I step, it really, really hurts. As you can tell, I'm kind of limping a little bit but once I get going, I can walk at a more normal rate. Our first five leaf clover of the trail. So I'm just stopped for lunch and I looked at the map and it looks like I only have about like seven miles to go. So amazing, hope that's accurate. If I do four more hours of hiking, I'll be done at five. Hopefully I'll have enough time to, it's a pond, the campsite where I'm staying, so it won't be super great water, but that way I can clean off my clothes a little bit for my big trip into town tomorrow. So if you saw this word, well, how would you pronounce that? Marais? Marais? My favorite, mariachi, but really it's pronounced Murray, like Murray eel. I'm going into Grand Murray to not a do not do a full overnight, but to get groceries, get a meal, and charge my power bank. I'm looking forward to it. I just hope I don't stink too bad. Okay, so I was really lowballing it when I said I might get to the campsite at 5 p.m. And the mileage might be wrong. 
and I was really pushing myself, but I'm so proud of myself. I made it and it's only 3 p.m. I really do not want to attempt to do laundry and bathe in this pond. If I was standing behind someone in line at the grocery or riding in the same car as someone that smelled like they'd been sweating um, all day, every day for the past seven days, it, it would just seem disrespectful to me. You know, you got to take care of yourself if you want to be part of society. I hope society appreciates what I'm doing for them. Hope there's no snapping turtles. Well, at least I didn't have to do that when it was cold out. And now that that's taken care of, I have a full hour before I have to start making dinner. So I'm gonna do what I always wanted, lay in the shade and eat snacks. I'm making teriyaki noodles tonight. And that's really fun because that's what I had the first night of the trip. So it's kind of coming full circle. I see this kind of as the end of this section of trail between Silver Bay and Grand Marais. Grand Mariachi as some like to call it. It's been a really fun section. Definitely the most scenic. It's definitely come with its challenges, but it's been a good section, that's for sure. You know all those lucky clovers I've been finding? They just paid off. So I just, I was leaning over to set up the camera, but I knocked the pot off my stove. It flipped in the air. I thought the worst was going to happen. It landed on the ground, but it landed right side up. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy I didn't lose that. So what I was about to say was, it's always interesting for me traveling to different states and noticing how the people in those states feel about living there. Like being from Kentucky, it's just like, yeah, I'm from Kentucky. I've met people from Oklahoma that are like, I'm from Oklahoma. Minnesota, I've noticed definitely they're into being Minnesota. Not to the level of like Texas or Colorado, but they got pride. Being up here, I definitely see why. It's gorgeous. It's similar to what I picture Canada being like. Lots of pine trees, lots of trees in general, beautiful big rivers, rolling hills, Lake Superior. It's gorgeous. Beautiful posture, by the way. I'm really looking forward to this next section of trail after Grand Mariachi. And uh, I think it's gonna be really challenging, but really cool at the same time. I know there's a lake walk where you're walking on pebbles. Just finishing is gonna be so cool. And you are welcome to come along with me. I hope you do join me for next video. And also thank you so much for watching this video. It really, it really makes it more fun for me to share it with you guys. So thanks again. See you next time.